Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegolu. Impeachment part two. It's new, it's original and it's on its way. The impeachment of an ex-president rather than a sitting one. Unprecedented events on the US Capitol as the process of the trial of former President Donald Trump kicks off for a second time. He stands accused of inciting insurrection against the US government. So what then? And what impact might the trial have on Mr. Trump's future and indeed on America's current political climate? Well, to get a more nuanced perspective on political developments in America, I'm joined now from Washington by Ambassador Herman Cohen, who served as the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Africa under George H.W. Bush. He also served as a special assistant to President Ronald Reagan and enjoyed a long career with the U.S. Foreign Service. And he is, of course, a senior member of the Republican Party. Thank you very much indeed, Ambassador Cohen, for joining us. Um, what do you make of the impeachment of Donald Trump part two? Well, it's very unusual. Uh, I think he's the first president ever to be impeached twice, but I think it was well deserved. He clearly wanted to interrupt the process of certification of uh, President Biden's election by both houses of Congress. And he provoked, as uh, the leading Republican uh, Mitch McConnell has said, he provoked this invasion of the Capitol in order to interrupt or prevent uh, the final certification. Uh, it failed, but it, and of course people were killed because of this, so quite correctly, uh, this, the House of Representatives have, has accused him of basically committing a crime, which uh, is worthy of, of impeachment. And I mean, there are a lot of wild cards on the Republican <laughs> side, aren't there, um, Ambassador Cohen? I, I mean, the future of the Republican Party and whether it reverts back to a pre-Trump era or whether Mr. Trump still has a lot of influence over the party. As I mean, all of that at issue here. And I imagine that a lot of these senators are going to try to hedge their bets as to how much influence they think President Trump will have over the party. Well, uh, President Trump in the election uh, received 70 million votes, which is quite high. And according to recent polling, uh, over 75 percent of Republicans continue to support him, despite uh, what is happening with the impeachment. So every Republican senator who is going to vote uh, during the trial has to take this into account. Uh, because they're going to run, some of them are going to run for re-election in 2022. And so they're not likely to vote to that President, ex-President Trump should be guilty. So, and of course you need, under the Constitution, you need two thirds of the Senate to convict. So that means that 17 Republican senators would have to vote to convict. I strongly doubt that there will be 17. There will be some. In the last impeachment trial, uh, the first impeachment, there was only one Republican senator, uh, Mitt, Mitt Romney, who voted to convict. I think there will be at least 10 this time, but I don't believe there will be 17. And I, so for that reason, I don't believe that he will be convicted. However, there is another important aspect. The, if, if a president is impeached and is convicted, he no longer can run for federal office again. But the, there is another provision of the Constitution, 14th Amendment, in which the Congress, by a majority vote, can declare uh, that he would not be allowed to run for federal office anymore. So it's, I believe what is going to happen I'm not sure, but that he will not be convicted because there will be insufficient Republican votes for two thirds. But by a majority vote, which the which the Democrats have in the Senate now, they will declare him 
ineligible to run again, which means that he will not be able to run in 2024. This is the scenario that I'm predicting. Well, I mean, that that seems to make a lot of sense, uh, and that seems to be a less um, intractable process. I mean, why didn't they just go for that? What, why go through the, the tortuous sort of process of trying to impeach and try him again? Well, uh, the impeach, uh, the House of Representatives was outraged uh, by what he did or what he provoked in the House of Representatives. After all, they were they were meeting and then they had to go hide. This is very humiliating for, the, you know, for our highest body of the land. So they were very angry. And so I think it was quite normal for them to go through an impeachment. I think the American public would not have understood if they not, did not do the impeachment. Uh, so that, that was quite necessary. Now, as, uh, as your previous uh, guest, uh, Mr. Lindsay said, uh, Trump remains quite popular uh, among Republicans. And uh, they are not abandoning him because of this incident. So uh, he is preparing, and he's already opened an office, he is preparing to run again in 2024. So in, in my view, uh, this second aspect, post-impeachment, uh, I think uh, is going to become very important after the Senate acts and fails to convict him. Right. Well, I just didn't see the sense in going through the rigmarole of, of an impeachment when they could, by a simple majority, simply vote to declare him unfit for public office and he wouldn't run again in spite of the number of people who support him. No, I think because what he did was so serious, uh, impeachment almost as a symbolic act had to be, had to be done. Uh, the people of the United States would not have understood if they had not impeached him. Uh, I think there was a clear majority in favor of that. I take your point there. Uh, and when you, uh, Ambassador Cohen, see the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, Mitch McConnell, saying he would be open to following through with an impeachment and conviction, how much sway do you think that has? Or are we not um, sure what Mitch McConnell is going to do next? Well, Mitch McConnell is a very, a very, very smart politician. And when he says that, he has been hearing from Republican senators saying, we cannot just ignore this. You know, we have to do something about it because what he, uh, Trump did was extremely serious. He was provoking uh, a rebellion. He wanted to over throw the election pro electoral process a free and fair election and you you can't get through the way this in europe they call this fascism i call it fascism as a republican i i, I detest what trump did so uh, mcconnell is hearing this from his own republican senators and he so normally what he he would have done as he did in the first impeachment was to make it sort of pro forma you know, we'll listen to the we'll listen to the accusation, and then we'll take a vote, and it'll be over. But I think this time he's going to take it very seriously. There will be a very deep, deep discussion, and he, he will not discourage his own Republicans from voting to to find President ex President Trump guilty. That's what he the signal he is sending is. If any of my colleagues in the Republican Party want to consider him guilty, they will not, not be punished. They will, if they want to find him guilty, they will not be punished. Uh, unfortunately, I don't feel that there will be the 17 Republican votes necessary to convict. But McConnell is, is reading what, what's happening in the public, and he's saying to his colleagues, if you want to vote to convict him, go ahead. Go ahead and vote for the convicted. I won't be upset about it. And, and I think uh, what, what's additionally very interesting, Ambassador Cohen, about the, is the idea of calling witnesses. 
and 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 that is the the fact that members of the Senate themselves are witnesses to what happened during that Capitol Hill insurrection. I understand there's a possibility that former Vice President Mike Pence could be called as well, um, in addition to members of the House. I mean, how much of a dilemma will that create for Mr. Pence? Uh, I don't think it'll be a dilemma because one thing the crowd was chanting when they were inside the Capitol was hang Ma uh, Mike Pence because Mike Pence, who was in charge of count certifying the vote, uh, President Trump said to him, Mike, you have to make sure that when they certify the vote that they change the numbers so that I, Trump, will win, of course, uh, Pence being... Uh, a constitutional lawyer himself could not do that. He wouldn't do that. And he said that to Trump. I, 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 we have to count the votes as they are. So then Trump publicly criticized him. So when, the, when this mob went into the Capitol, they started, they started shouting, hang Mike Pence. Hang Mike. They were blaming him for not doing what uh, pr President Trump asked him to do. And in fact, they even set up a, a hangman's noose outside the Capitol on a pole. So Pence just barely escaped, uh, thanks to one of the Capitol guards who diverted the attention of the mob. He said, come this way, you come this way. And he ran up the steps and he brought them up. And Pence just avoided them by one minute. So he, he was quite frightened, and I can't, uh, I can't see, and of course he has ambitions for the future. He, he might be a candidate, the Republican presidential candidate for 2024. So I, he's, he would be a witness, I think, since uh, the majority of the American people uh, consider Trump to be guilty, I think he'd be quite happy quite willing to be a witness. It, won't, it will not do him any harm politically. So, I mean, at the risk of, of having you repeat yourself, and, and if you do, my apologies, uh, is it reasonable to assume that personally, people like Mitch McConnell and Mike Pence, uh, as well as, you know, both people who have been, you know, very loyal to President Trump over the past four years, now seem to have developed a sort of personal disdain for him ever since Mr. Trump had a role really in putting their lives in danger when that mob of Trump supporters came just a few feet away from the chamber that they were in, as you pointed out. Yeah, well, there's a very important poll uh, that, that's very accurate that's taken once a week here in the United States, and that is popularity. And for the first time this past week, Trump's popularity went below 40%. This almost never happens uh, with, a, with a president. Uh, when a president is, is low in popularity uh, for any reason, you know, it fluctuates from week to week, maybe it goes down to 45%, the lowest. And when a president is popular as Biden is now, it's well over 50%. But to go below, you know, to go down to 38%, this shows that a lot of Americans are very unhappy uh, with President Trump. So uh, at the present time, uh, voting against President Trump is not it's not a problem for, for even Republicans, for most, for a lot of Republicans. Others, of course, uh, cannot do that depending on what their constituents feel. Okay, please stay with us, Ambassador Cohen. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about the upcoming U.S. Senate impeachment trial of Donald Trump. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagulu. So former U.S. President Donald Trump stands accused of inciting insurrection against the U.S. government. On Monday night, the article of impeachment, as it's called, which is about a page and a half outlining the charge, was passed from the lower house to the Senate. And the upper house now becomes the court in which, for the first time in American history, a former president stands trial for impeachment. Of course, Mr. Trump has already been impeached once before and was found not guilty as president. But this is an unprecedented set of circumstances and it requires a two-thirds majority from the Senate. The aim of his opponents is to bar him from taking office ever again. And the Republican and former U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, Ambassador Herman Cohen, is still with me from Washington. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Uh, in terms of the current political atmosphere in the U.S. and the fact that so many Republican voters, maybe not those who are part of the establishment, like yourself, respectfully, but many Republican voters believe that the election was stolen. I mean, doesn't this give more oxygen potentially to conspiracy theories and to the idea of this being a witch hunt? Isn't that the dilemma of people in the party who don't support Mr. Trump, like yourself? That, that is exactly right. Uh, since so many people uh, supported President Trump and liked him very much, when he said that the election was stolen, they believed him. You know, when I, there, was, there was an article in our Washington DC newspaper, the Washington Post the other day, and they have kept a record of all of the lies that he's, he's told. And they said it was, it was over 10,000 during four, uh, four years of his presidency. He just said anything that came to his mind that, and he, he personally believed uh, was true. And so a lot of people who believed him, and some, some of the Republicans, I think a strong percentage of the Republicans really like Trump. It's, it's almost a cult figure. Uh, he's been a star of television, and they really believe him. And uh, so when he said the election was rigged, uh, a lot of them said, oh, well, if he says it, it must be true. And in fact, there are couple of Republicans in the Congress who have said they believe him, which is really appalling. I mean, there is there are a couple, there is one congressman, uh, a senator whom I not name, who is a, has all the top degrees. He, he's a graduate of Harvard Law School. He went to Yale, one of our leading universities. And he says, well, I believe there are grounds for investigation. In other words, he, he says, it's quite possible that the election was stolen. This is appalling for someone with his education. And it's very anti-democratic because the election was a good, ele a good normal election. And uh, Trump lost because he didn't get the votes. So for them to say that is really, but it, anyway, a lot of people believe it. And uh, this is gonna be a, a political problem because they, they consider if, you believe that the election was stolen, they believe that President Biden is not legitimate. So I think Biden is gonna to have to do things to show that he is, is legitimate. That's why you're seeing now Biden is introducing uh, projects to help the, the American people who are suffering from the pandemic, bring in much more vaccines, distribute money to people who have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. So Biden understands that, that he's starting out under a handicap because so many Republicans think, well, you didn't really win the election. And you lost the election. Trump did. So, he, so this is a dilemma. But I think over the first year of Biden's presidency, the belief in the, that the election was rigged and that Trump was right will fade, will start to fade. So, uh, I mean, what does Donald Trump do in, in this case? I mean, does he try to energize his base? I mean, we, we've heard of quite aggressive pressure being expressed by some of his supporters. I mean, what would be a good idea 
for him to do if you were to advise him even though I, I expect that's not something you would very much want to do but what would be a good idea for him to do because I mean if it is partly um, legal but also partly a political decision that's being taken by the senators what does Mr. Trump do to influence their minds? Well he uh, under US law Former presidents are entitled to have their own office with personnel financed by the U.S. government. Uh, former President Bush, former President Clinton, <clears throat> former President Obama, they all have what they call presidential offices financed by the government. And they could use that as a base to communicate with the public. And they're even saying that President, former President Trump will even establish his own political party called the Patriot Party. So he, he will have very many opportunities to continue to communicate with the people who support him and to continue to say Biden is a socialist, he wants big deficits in the budget. He will continue, he will be the main opposition uh, to President Biden and will continue to criticize uh, whatever he is doing. President Biden wants to bring in more immigrants, and he know, and Trump knows that his base doesn't like immigrants. They don't want to see people of color, his people who speak Spanish, people from Africa. Uh, that base doesn't want these people to come in. So he will. But uh, Biden is is making it easier now to go back to the old policy of encouraging immigration. You know, some of our best scientists. Uh, some of our leading uh, experts on various subjects are immigrants. Or right. Are what, what I actually mean, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, <laughs> Ambassador Cohen, but what I mean is in this particular case, rather than what he'll do, um, you know, much later and, and over the next four years of the Biden presidency, I mean, in, in, the, in the context of the trial that he's just about to face, what, does, what should Donald Trump do? in this case because you know it's it's a partly legal case but it's also partly a political decision that will be taken by the senators that that's correct well what he has done he's hired some very powerful lawyers who have a very good track record so these lawyers so the witnesses will come in and these lawyers will attack the witnesses will try to show that what they're saying is just political prejudice they're not saying anything real. And so he'll start out with that, and then he himself will be making public statements. Fortunately, uh, his, his Twitter account has been closed because of his provocative statements and his lies. So he doesn't have that. He had, he had over 100 million followers on his Twitter account. But he will be plenty of voice, and above all, his lawyers will make strong arguments against the witnesses to show that, that, that really the, any case for conviction is not very strong. Right. So, I mean, when you look back at the four years of Donald Trump, uh, Ambassador Cohen, I mean, I know you were on the sort of you're in the same party, but you were you're you're you're, you're, you're described as a sort of moderate as opposed to the the more extreme sort of, you know, wings of the party. I mean, what would you say um, are the redeeming sort of <laughs> factors or qualities to having President Trump in office for the last four years for the Republican Party or, or nothing at all? Well, no, that's a very important question because not everything that President Trump did was bad. For example, I'm a specialist in African affairs. And when I write an article saying that President Trump's policy toward Africa was quite good. And <laughs> some of the people who hate President Trump were, were calling me up and saying, how could you say that? Well, I was saying what President Trump has done, he's encouraged U.S. investors to go to Africa. He has continued the very good programs of President Obama and President George W. Bush. He's had a, an excellent program in Africa. So, okay, so, so he did some good things for, for, for Africa, and that's, uh, 
that's a, a good note to end on. I don't mean to interrupt you, Ambassador Cohen, but we are out of time. Uh, the uh, US, former US Assistant Secretary of State for Africa, Ambassador Cohen, talking to me there from Washington. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja and Washington, bye-bye and thank you for watching.